so good morning. My name is Ellie. Uh, thank you for uh, for the invitation to to be um, the creative speaker today. Although I don't think that I'm too much of a creative person. Um, and thank you guys for coming. Uh, I know that it's early in the morning, but uh, yeah, and some of you have to go very far to get here, but uh, there's free breakfast and uh, yeah, cool people. So welcome. <coughs> so again, um, I'm Ellie. I'm uh, 25 and I was born and raised in Hanoi. Um, even though I introduced myself as Ellie, my Vietnamese name is uh, Huong. And uh, I've been working in the international um, environment for a while, so I, and before I didn't really like my, my, my given name, like Hung, because it's really hard to, to pronounce, even when I pronounce it, I have to like Hung, and it also sounds very heavy. Um, so, I, so I asked people to call me uh, Ellie, um, but now I'm having like a little bit of, of uh, identity crisis where um, to my family and friends, I'm still, or, and a lot of my friends, I'm still Hương. And uh, I'm also writing my name as Ellie all over the place. So I, sometimes I, I, I write letters and I don't know how to sign, uh, whether it's Hương or Ellie. Um, so maybe I would just pick another name and restart. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, so I'm, before, before I share a little bit about my story, I would like to just ask you guys a little bit. Um, when you think of restart, what do you, what words that came to your mind? What do you think of? Maybe just shout it out so that everybody can hear. Fresh. Fresh. Also, having a, being brave, having another go, even if something didn't work. Having another go and something, something didn't work. Let go. Break. Break. A, a lot of positive words. Uh, <laughs> for me, uh, the first time that I was really aware of restart, I was in university. And back then, there was no positive word like, like what you just described. There was a lot of fears, doubts, and, and disappointment. Um, so I, I had always been a good a good student, like a good daughter, a good student, always was trying my best to uh, to get good grades, and um, I, I was never a smart or clever one. I was never on top of my class, but I but I was a hardworking one, so I did all right. Um, I got into a, a national high school, which was pretty good, um, and yeah, in in the old village of Hanoi that I that I grew up in. Um, getting into a national high school was a big deal. So I was con nhang người ta. I was the topic that um, parents talk to their kids over dinner when they want them to get study harder. I was I was a good example. Um, uh, and then uh, at the age of 17, when I was about to graduate from high school, um, like any of my peer, I applied to a university without really knowing who I was or what I wanted to do. Um, everybody applied to one, so I had to also apply to one. Um, also, as a young Vietnamese person, um, I grew up also with a belief that going to university or getting a diploma is, is the, the way to success, not a way, but the way to have a better life. So I had no choice but um, to apply to one. And I passed with a, to a pretty good school with a relatively high result. So I was even like more proud of, uh, of myself and my parents were also proud. Uh, and I was like, yes, first, first step to success. Like I'm getting closer, I'm gonna have a better life. But shortly after the first semester at school, I realized that something wasn't right. I, uh, didn't have the results that I should have had. I failed one or two subjects, which I thought wasn't even possible in Vietnamese universities. Um, and I was, 
I was very down and, and stressed and upset with myself, and I was afraid um, of being a disappointment. So I tried to study harder, but I didn't find any motivation to do so. Um, so a thought that came to me that I never thought that I would have um, stopping my study. Um, so this is where the fears and the doubts kick in. Um, I started asking myself questions like, um, yeah, like, what, what am I going to do? Uh, what, if, what if people were right that this is the only way to success? If I don't continue my study, I would never have a better life. I, I'm, I'm never going to make it. Um, I also tried to think of a positive one. Um, you know, Bill Gates, he also stopped his study. Um, so I was like, yeah, Bill Gates. But then, very, sorry? And Mark too, see? And he's now very famous, everybody knows him. Uh, but then very quickly I responded to myself like, he's a genius, Bill Gates, he's, he's a genius. I'm not a genius. Who do I think, yeah, who do you think you are? Uh, why do you compare yourself with Bill, Bill Gates? So I thought of myself as a complete failure and um, totally incapable. Um, and a big disappointment not only to my parents but also to my neighbors, and I'm not going to be a good example for them to talk to their kids anymore. Um, so instead of stopping my study, um, I stopped my study at one school and jumped to another school with the hope of things are going to be different and uh, maybe I would do better there and maybe I would still have a chance to get a better life. So. In the midst of the second year in the second school that I was in, um, I stumbled upon uh, Nomas Hanoi. Um, so Nomas Hanoi, I could use many fancy words to describe it as it was the right people at the right time, it was life-changing opportunities, it was a turning point of my life. Uh, but when I look back um, and it came down to, I, and came down to it, it was really just a space where people really saw me for who I was. People saw my potentials and committed to help bring those potentials out and forward. People who really listened to what I wanted or longed for. People who asked me questions or taught me to ask different questions. So. Getting out of nomads, I started asking myself different questions. What if people were right, but I were right too? That maybe there is another way to success, that I don't have to go to universities, which is something that I don't like or not particularly good at. What if um, universities don't and were not for everybody? What if I could uh, still make it? without going to universities. So in March 2015, I finally dropped out. Um, and it, not, on, not without doubts and fear, but with doubt and fear, um, but I dropped out anyway, uh, and entered the workforce. I uh, did a lot of jobs, different kinds of jobs, from being a waitress to a babysitter, and then uh, also being a tutor, and then toward the end, I was uh, teaching English. So you could imagine a lot of restarting, like quitting and doing again, and sending CV and doing interviews and doing new jobs all over again. Um, and at the end, um, I was doing pretty good with a teaching job. I got a pretty good uh, salary without a degree, believe it or not. Um, so I thought, oh, okay, uh, this is good. I, 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 make, I was working a lot, I was making a lot of money. Um, oh, maybe, maybe uh, I made it. Uh, maybe this is success. Um, but then there was something that was still not right, something that was missing. And this is where also fear and doubts came back into my life. Um, well, it was always there, but it has never been m much more like this. And I started asking myself questions again. So is it the pattern that I have? Am I a quitter? Why can't I stick 
to one thing from beginning to end? What if I can't find a better job? What if they ask me for the degree that I don't have? A lot of negative what ifs came back to my life. But this time, I had more tools. This time, I knew that I cannot stop with only the negative what ifs. This time, I knew that I had to listen more deeply within myself to see what I really wanted to do, to see what was missing. Um, and I found down that I was missing meanings in my life. I was making a lot of money, but then I didn't have any chance to contribute back. I didn't have ch any chance to create something meaningful to me that I can look back and be proud of. Um, so. In the summer of 2016, I decided to quit my well-paid English teaching job again um, and joined Nomas Hanoi as a facilitator with the hope that I could bring more of the experience that I had with them to more people to help them figure out who they are, what they want to do, and give them the tools to do it. So for two years working in Nomads Hanoi, I have also witnessed a lot of changes, transitions, restarts. At the beginning, I thought, OK, I found it. This is it. I'm never going anywhere. But then I realized that, oh, it, it does have its struggles and ups and downs, too. Before, Nomads Hanoi was really a place for um, individuals, like a creative business program who help individuals um, build their personal development and then bring ideas into concrete projects. So like really entrepreneurial mindset and tools. Um, but then as it evolves, people in Nomads, we listened, we, we, we realized that there are more callings, that there are more needs around Nomads in the community of Hanoi, but also international friends that the world is changing so fast and the world is facing complex challenges that one individual alone cannot solve it. That there is such a need bigger now than ever that those individuals need to stick together and work together and be together in a different way to create a greater, a larger scale of impact. So I'm very proud and happy to share this, but. This year, uh, we have finally become a social enterprise um, that allowed us to not only help individuals, but also work with companies and organizations um, to bring about mindful collaboration and, and being together um, to create positive impacts, not only around Hanoi, but in Vietnam and hopefully in, region, in the region. So, I'm sharing all of this not to tell you to quit school if you're in one. <laughs> I believe that schools and I believe that education is, is the key to create change. Um, and it's also something that in nomads we strongly believe in as well. Um, but maybe, just maybe, uh, different people learn in different ways. And there's no um, definite or absolute way to success for everybody. That universities are great. I think they are a great environment for, for discipline and, and uh, building capacity. But maybe it's not for everybody. For me, for example, I learn by doing. I learn by making mistakes. I learn by trying. I learn by falling very hard and then getting up and do it all over again. Um, and for some people, they learn at school much more, than, uh, much more than I do. So what I'm trying to say is, is no matter where we are at, change is inevitable. Even if I stayed at school, I also had to leave school one day and enter a workforce. So if I don't let go of the old and let the new come, like, like some of you said, letting go, the new wouldn't come. Like, for example, we supposed to have the winter now in Hanoi, uh, 
but as you can see, two of our ACs are, are on, and we were wearing mostly summer clothes. Um, so if we hold on to that idea that it's supposed to be winter, and we wear a lot of clothes with a lot of like warm head and warm clothes, we're going to be suffocated in here. Um, so it's also a lot about accepting, accepting that what is what is coming to us and accepting that we are just in a different phase, in a different world, that something might not work and we have to start over again. And actually when I look back in the past, my journey of the past years, I didn't see of it as restarting. I see it as starting something new, just ending one phase and moving on to the next journey. So with that, I didn't, I, I, now I don't have to approach restarting with the fears and the doubts and the, um, the unknown and the uncertainty, but I could approach it with joy and excitement that, yay, we're in the new journey. We are in the beginning of a holiday, or uh, if you know that, how, how it feels. Uh, so I, can, I could change my perspective and my approach to starting over. And there's a quote that I really like. Um, I don't make the same mistake twice. I make it four or five times, just in case. <laughs> so in the time of transitions and change, we might fail. But it's OK, because we can always restart. Thank you for listening. <laughs> That was wonderful. Really enjoyed it a lot. So now I'd like to invite um, the audience, if you'd like to have some questions for Ellie Moon about her restart or her beginning again. Um, what, what was the first course and second course that you studied? What, what's oh. The story? <laughs> so in the first university, I studied um, um, languages. I studied Japanese. Um, language and culture, and then I changed to um, international commerce. So it's, it was very different. So one, I would become either an interpreter or a Japanese teacher. Uh, the other one, I would uh, work in importing and exporting industry. And I found out that I was not meant to be neither. <laughs> Um, I, I can't say this on behalf of all young Vietnamese because uh, I believe also we are very different um, even though we're in it's the same generation but what I can say for my struggle is um, is first the idea of success so when I first um, got into university like when I first graduated from high school the idea of success in my head was really about um, getting a degree, getting a good job, making a lot of money, um, getting married by the age of uh, 24 and getting the first born uh, by the age of 25 and getting the second born by the age of 30. So that was the idea of success for a, Viet a young Vietnamese girl um, back then. Um, so my struggle was really to, to redefine my own definition of success, what does it mean for me, what makes me happy, or what makes me feel fulfilled. Um, so that was the, the struggle. Um, and that comes a lot with, um, with the pressure from, from family. Um, and family, not just my parents, but it's also my relatives and also my neighbors, as I mentioned, because I live in, I used to live in, um, this old village of Hanoi, where almost everybody is related either by blood or marriage. So if, uh, if there's a rumor in this house, like half an hour later, half of the village would know. Um, so that's kind of pressure um, when creating or when doing something differently um, that I have to face, like a lot of 
you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, you're supposed to do this, and you're supposed to do that. So that was, that was tough, yeah. So did they give you grief about the fact that you're not married and don't have children? Oh yeah, every, every day if I walk out of the house, uh, they would be like, oh, when are you getting married? And uh, even the young children, uh, I have a nephew um, who live next door, and he's, he's seven or eight. And he was like, he told me one day that in all his life, he has never seen me having a baby. So, <laughs> so eight years that he had lived in his life and I still don't have a baby. So he was very disappointed in me as well. I was <laughs> Yeah, so um, before meeting nomads, um, it was really just me against the world. It was uh, really tough in terms of I had to reason out myself uh, in my own head. Like, okay, I'm going to do this. Uh, is it okay? And uh, just really reasoned it out. So before meeting nomads, it was a real battle and... I bit myself up a lot, um, thinking that this is not right, uh, that I'm a horrible person, I'm a horrible daughter to my parents. Um, but nomads, that's why I said nomads was really a, a turning point when, where I started meeting my mentors, um, where they asked me questions that, that helped me realize that there are more than one path, there are, that there are options that I can choose. Um, so yeah, Chris, Chris Wink is the founder of Nomas Hanoi, and he was really the one who impacted me a lot in um, making in, in choosing my path afterward. So uh, you mentioned you mentioned that uh, you know you <laughs> That's a good, very good question. Thank you. Um, my first reaction would be ignore it <laughs> or run away from it. Uh, so a very interesting um, thing or pattern that I also notice within my family is that before quitting school, I got a lot of pressure from my parents saying that, Without a degree, I would never make it. But then after quitting school and I got different kind of jobs and I even got like a pretty good, well-paid job, um, they started, they, they stopped uh, pressuring uh, me. They, they were still a bit ashamed about me not having a degree. Uh, so they don't talk about it. They don't tell people that I didn't have a degree. But they stopped um, pressuring me. And I think what I realized from that is, is that they just wanted me to have a better life. As, as almost every parent, they, they, they worried. And um, the only strategy that they knew was sending me to university. Um, so that wasn't their fault. Uh, it was also from their parents. They didn't have a chance to go to university. So they did, they did have a very tough life. Um, so, but when I could sort of prove to them that the world is changing and I don't need a university to, to make it uh, or to, to be happy or to be fulfilled or to take care of myself, um, I feel the pressure going, like fading away. So it's a lot about um, being a bit stubborn, but in a, in a positive word, being persistent um, and really going forward with what I wanted to do. And when I was talking to Michelle before this, that I, we also realized that there's a very fine line between being a quitter and letting go to follow something new. So that is yeah, that's, that's why the, your question relevant a lot, that if, if we have somebody 
who could help us along the way, it really, it's really helpful because, um, because they could help us see in a different perspective and ask questions and, uh, yeah, and, and help us see in a different light um, that we either don't have to beat ourselves up and also see a big picture before making decision. Um, and, I, and I can say that I have like a perfect formula of knowing whether I'm a quitter or, um, or I'm just a brave young woman. Uh, I guess for me it was about trusting my, my intuition and, and listening deeply to what is, what is talking to me, either from inside and from, or from yeah. So from inside. do Um, this is a very tough question. Um, in nomads, we are also in a transition where we are redefining um, where we're going next. We know that who we want to serve, ish, um, and now we have to decide in what way we want to serve them. Um, and to me, there's there are two um, that there's two target groups that I'm very passionate about. One is youth, um, young, young people who want to create change or impacts or just simply knowing more about themselves, um, especially university students. <laughs> uh, and the other one is, is young professionals uh, who also just enter their careers and trying to find an alternative way to work and to be to be different at work and to be more wholeness at work. Uh, so that is, those are two of my, yeah, two, two groups of people that I'm very passionate about. Um, so, so far I've been able to serve them all together with nomads. Um, so it's, yeah, I would say I don't know where I'm going next. I'm trusting that, um, as, I'm, as I keep going, I would have cues along the way that show me um, where to turn. Do you have any brothers or sisters? I have one bigger brother. So bigger the brother. pressure's more on him then? Yes, uh, I'm, so I'm sort of <laughs> lucky in that sense. I, um, so there's two sides of it. I don't have any pressure, so which is like, yes, I don't have any pressure. But then on the other side, my parents also don't have any expectations from me, which means that they also think that, okay, you're a young girl, you don't need to do anything, just find a rich husband and you'll be fine. So uh, there's, there's two sides of, uh, of being a, a girl, the younger one in the family. Um, and also I have, a, I have a nephew, like a one year old, He's gonna be one year old in one year in uh, next next week, um, and as I see him, yeah, it's just with the world uh, how it's changing and and the education in Vietnam. I just have this fear and worry um, for him. Um, so that's also a group that I'm also concerned or passionate about. That I want to help um, my nephew as well and. I guess maybe that's something that I need to figure out because I don't I don't know. I don't know how to help him.